Hello everyone, how are you this beautiful day, this beautiful day that the Lord has made? I'm Karen Jane Casey on the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. And every Wednesday, the episode is Sword of the Spirit. And, uh, and we get that from Ephesians chapter 6, where we're encouraged to go out into the world fully dressed with the full armor of God. And then this part of that equipment or our armor is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we have a defensive weapon against the enemies as they attack us against our adversaries. So in keeping with that, in this episode, we are always referring to scripture or passages, depending on our topic that we're covering. So today's topic is bad influence. And I'm referring to Delilah in the Old Testament. Well, on the internet, I found 20 famous women of the Bible, heroines and harlots, biblical women who impacted their world by Mary Fairchild, updated in November 2020. And I encourage you to take a peek at it. Within that article, there was a short blurb about Delilah. And I've always been fascinated with that story, particularly um, how, how foolish Samson was in falling for the same tricks over and over again. But he was completely enchanted with her. Well, many of us can recall that she was a bad influence on Samson, a man of God. She used her beauty and sex appeal to influence this strong man. She preyed on his runaway lust, his desires. Samson was a judge over Israel, a warrior who killed many Philistines, which fueled their desire for revenge. So you may recall that the Philistines were idol worshipers. They were opposed to the living living God. They used Delilah to discover the secret of Samson's strength. She tricked him several times before he finally shared that his strength was in his long hair. Ultimately, Samson returned to God, but his death was tragic. So he did have to suffer for a while his consequences in that falling for her trickery. The story of Samson and Delilah tells us how lack of self-control can lead to a person's downfall. Can you re- any of us relate to that story? I've certainly made had many instances along my life journey where I've been tempted to make mistakes or outright sin. Always there were consequences for my thoughts, words, behaviors, and actions, but it helped me to get back to the path I needed to be on. The Lord let me fall into the pit, suffer, repent, and come out more grown up, more mature from having been protected from anything happening. Our Heavenly Father is much like an earthly father in that he wants the best for us and for us to learn from our mistakes. How much would we learn if we got by with everything that we did or if we had protection for every movement we had? Well, that would take away from free will, wouldn't it? We wouldn't grow or mature. One thing we can do to prevent the downward fall to temptations would be preventative options. And what might that be? Saturating ourselves with the Word of God, a healthy prayer life, and praise and gratitude for everything that the Lord has already brought us out of. Have faith. Have faith in Him always. What else? To consider where the bad influences come from and avoid them maybe. For me, listening to negative news factoids, especially during the pandemic, was harmful for me. In no time, I would get upset, worried, angry. I didn't know what to believe. In fact, a lot of lies were being told to me in a rapid, rapid order. (laughs) Also, when we hang around with folks who are always filled with negative emotions, that tends to rub off on us, doesn't it? Someone is easily offended, pushing you for a reaction, even when you're able to exercise self-control with the retaliation or offense, we may suffer that inner emotions 
about the situation. Even if we handle it correctly, we have internalized that pain. Avoiding the things we know will harm us would be great ways to prevent bad influences from getting the best of us. And that sounds easy, doesn't it? But we all know nobody is perfect while living on planet Earth. We can't live in a bubble. We've got to love others as ourselves, even love our enemies. So in prevention, it would seem that we can really only shelter ourselves from the place, things, and people that do the most harm and on the most regular basis. Instead of looking for what bad influences to avoid, let's look at what people, places, and things would bring good influence into our life. Help us to grow and then pursue them. Whenever I'm caught, I've caught myself thinking, feeling, saying, or doing something wrong or in the negative or mean-spirited direction, I quickly repent and walk on. Walk on. I don't carry away with me lots of guilt and, and just keep carrying the guilt. Here's the scripture that comes to mind, inspired by God and shared by the Apostle Paul. And that is Philippians 4, verses 4 through 8. I love it. It really encourages me in my Christian walk. I'm going to read it now. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 8. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He does. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me. Uh, any everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will do with you. I love that. Well, I want to encourage you as you travel along your Christian walk, there will be detours and potholes along the way, trials along your path. Jesus warned us that there would be hardships, trials, and tribulations. But be of good cheer. He has already overcome. We can follow Jesus in all we do, study God's word, obey and praise the Lord, enjoy an abundance in his calling, serving him by serving others, his purpose for each of our lives, as well as joy, peace, and love. When we're spending our time in his presence, we are more joyful and at peace. He fills us up with his love, and as his vessels, we pour it out for others. We become more like Jesus. As we draw closer to Jesus in worship and service, placing our focus on him and not on the many distractions of this world, we are better able to discern and walk away from bad influences. Well, let me end this episode with uh, the salutation found in 2 Corinthians. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for joining me in this Wednesday morning episode, Sword of the Spirit, which is with the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. As you may know, Turn to God with Karen has episodes every Monday morning, Hope and Faith Journey, where we cover various topics to bring encouragement and healing through our challenges. And then every Friday on Karen's Book Corner, we share about books that I've written or about other authors and their works. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, podcaster, domestic violence, victim advocate, and ambassador for Christ. And I encourage you to go to my website contact page. Send me your, your comments, your suggestions. Any feedback is always welcome. I'm always open for improvement. And that website is KarenJaneCasey.com. At my website, you can find resource material regarding domestic violence and my books, blogs, and podcasts. 
If you've read and enjoyed any of my books, especially if you, they've brought you encouragement or positive change, please let me know, and I appreciate a review on Amazon. Well, thank you, and God bless.